Good morning. Welcome to our Easter praise service here at Freedom Baptist Church on YouTube. Oh yes, our hearts greatly desire for all of us to be together in person, but uh, we are rejoicing that through technology we can be together today and rejoice in our resurrected Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, we're going to be singing this morning. And shortly after uh, this first singing part, Pastor Dan's going to come with a message and a communion time. And our hearts are just going to rejoice together. Um, something I want to thank you, Freedom Baptist Church family, from what we're hearing and seeing from you all, even though we can't gather together in person, we know that we, that you are reaching out to one another, that you are checking on people. I have received calls from many of you, how is so-and-so doing? Does anyone need help? Does anyone need encouragement? Thank you so much for that. And what is our theme this year in 2020? It is impact others for Christ. And just because we may have stay-at-home orders and uh, we have to quarantine and we can't gather together, thank you for continuing to impact others for Christ. Now, hopefully, um, the, for those who we have your emails, hopefully you received the church directory, the updated church directory, and you are able now to contact all of our church folks that are in the directory. If you still need one of those and you did not receive one of those, please contact me or Pastor Dan, and we will get that to you. I also hope you are checking us out online uh, on our YouTube channel, also on Wednesdays to see our Awana recordings and also Pastor Dan's study in the Psalms. And uh, so make sure you tune in for that. And then don't forget to join us for communion time right after our, our worship and singing time here together. Pastor Dan will share from God's word and then he'll lead us in communion together. Now we're going to start our song service with a Sunday school resurrection song called Alive, Alive. Jesus is alive. Let's rejoice. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. One more time. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia. My Jesus is alive. Do you believe Jesus is alive today? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And we're not having a regular Sunday school this morning, this entire service this morning. We call our Easter praise and communion service, and we're so glad you can be joining us. What was last Sunday? It was Palm Sunday, and that's when we remember when Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, fulfilling the prophecy of how the Messiah would come and enter Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem, and the people were exalting him and praising him, but they wanted him to come and, and bring in the kingdom and destroy the Roman Empire, and they wanted peace. But Jesus, the Messiah, would bring peace, but he was coming to be the Savior and to pay the price for sin. And he wasn't coming in the way that they were expecting at that time. This week we know as Passion Week. And uh, when we um, remember how the religious leaders were trying to trap Jesus and they wanted him gone, they wanted to kill him, and they convinced um, one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, to betray him, and he was arrested. And they beat Jesus and mocked him and scourged him and gambled for his clothing. And then they crucified him on a cross. And he paid, a, he experienced and suffered a horrible death. A horrible death. Why? Because he was a failed Messiah? No. Because he is the Son of God, and He willingly gave His life so that you and I and every sinner could have eternal life. We can have that eternal life if we accept by faith what Jesus has done for us. So He paid that penalty, and while He was on that cross suffering in agony, you know what He was doing? He was thinking about impacting others. There was a thief who called out to him, wanting his help, wanting Jesus to remember him. And Jesus was showing mercy to a sinner who was repentant and seeking God's mercy. Jesus was doing that even when he was suffering on the cross. What happened after he died on the cross? They didn't leave him up there. They took him down and they buried him. Can you imagine how heartbroken his followers were? How heartbroken his disciples were? But what happened on the third day? Exactly what he promised. He rose again the third day and some of his disciples, many of the disciples couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe that Jesus had risen again. But do you know that while Jesus was with his disciples, he told them that he would die and rise again? And he gave them hope. Back when Jesus' friend Lazarus died, his good friend Lazarus died, and Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, wanted Jesus to come when Lazarus was sick, but Jesus did not come. And then after Lazarus died, Jesus came, and the sisters were wondering, Jesus, why didn't you come? And for our scripture reading and memory this morning, we're going to recite together John 11, 25 through 26. This is when Jesus was still alive, and this is what he said, I believe, to Martha. Would you say this reference and these verses with me together? John 11, 25 through 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? John eleven twenty five through 26 now, shortly after Jesus shared this with his disciples and with Martha, and, and uh, if Mary was listening on there, he raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. Do you think they understood what was going on? Maybe a little bit. But do you think 
after Jesus died and rose again, they remembered these words? Yes, that's why John wanted to write them down, so that we would remember. Jesus didn't just rise again for his disciples. He didn't rise again for himself. He rose again to show victory over sin and death so that you and I today can have eternal life as well. Let's recite these wonderful, encouraging resurrection verses together. Uh, and, and we'll begin with the reference. John eleven twenty five through 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and that he rose again? He didn't stay in the grave. He had victory over death and that's what we are celebrating each and every day as Christians, but particularly on Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. So the next song um, um, we are going to do in a little bit, um, uh, we'll sing a song in just a few moments. I'm getting my order all messed up. Our ladies are going to come now and play a traditional resurrection hymn that you almost all are familiar with. You listen as they play, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Our missions focus today is not on one specific missionary. Our missions focus today on every Easter is on the outreach, the gospel outreach going on all over the world. Easter is a very special time of year, and this Easter is unlike any other Easter we have ever celebrated. But that doesn't mean that the gospel isn't going out and that people aren't being challenged with their need for a Savior on this Easter weekend. There are online outreaches and people still trying to witness to family members in their homes all over the world, people that need the gospel. This morning, let's pray for the Easter outreach going on around the world. Let's pray that God would use us to be a witness in these next several days and the seeds that have already been sown this week that God would take them and cultivate growth and reach people for his honor and glory. So let's ask God's blessing on this Easter weekend and that people would come to know him all over the world. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much 
that you are God and that you are on your throne and that you are working even in the midst of this pandemic that we're facing. The devil may be excited and he may be convinced and thinking that he's winning, but Lord, you are still working and moving and drawing people's hearts to yourself. Lord, would you take all of these gospel messages, Easter messages that are being preached this morning so clearly, uh, the ones where the gospel is being preached, would you take them through the airwaves, even into closed countries, to ears that have never heard, to hearts that are ready to receive your truth. Lord, would you help us here in the States to look for opportunities where we can encourage and share the gospel with others? Thank you for softening our hearts, getting the attention of our nation. May we be more ready to hear the truth of your word. May you draw many hearts to yourself. Lord, thank you for the way you're providing for us. Thank you that we can give unto you, even if um, some may be struggling, some may have lost their jobs. But Lord, I thank you for the food you've provided, the shelter that we have. And Lord, thank you that we can still give to you in this time through the mail, online. Lord, would you help us to be the stewards you would have us to be? Would you take the offering that comes in this week and we thank you for it, and may we be faithful to use it for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We can't take a physical offering today, but we can still sing our offering hymn of praise, I Live. This is what we sing on Resurrection Sunday. If you don't know this song, listen to it the first time through, and then we'll sing it again. Here we go. I live, I live, because Christ is risen. I live, I live, with power over sin. I live, I live. Because Christ is risen, I live, I live to worship Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you're alive. Because you're alive. Because you're alive, I live. One more time. I live, I live. Because Christ is risen, I live, I live with power sin. I live, I live, because Christ is risen. I live, I live, to worship Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you're alive. Because you're alive. Because you're alive, I live. The next song we're going to sing is about the cross, the power of the cross, how we are even able to have salvation. We've sung this before. This is one of our favorites here at Freedom. Let's sing together. Oh, to see the dawn of the darkest day, Christ on the road to sinful man, torn and beaten man, nailed to a cross of wood. This the power of the cross. Christ became sin for us, took the blame. Oh uh -huh. 
Now the daylight flees, now the ground beneath quakes as its maker bows his head. Curtain torn in two, dead are raised to life, finish the victory cry. This the power of the cross, Christ been forgiven at the cross? Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what he's done for you? Our ladies are going to come now and sing a special number based upon the hymn that you're familiar with one day, the same words, but a different tune that we learned at the wilds. A beautiful hymn. Let's think about what Jesus has done for us and what he is coming back to do one day. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among
One day he is coming. Are you ready? Have you trusted Christ as your Savior? As our last song before pastor comes to share from God's word and lead us in the Lord's table, we're going to sing a famous Easter song. We usually sing it almost every Easter. Christ arose. Let's rejoice in this truth. We'll sing the first verse and then the chorus, and then we'll sing the second verse and build majestically uh, on the third, and then we'll sing the chorus one last time. Let's rejoice together. people said amen Jesus is risen believer we can rejoice in that now let's prepare our hearts let's be ready to hear pastor Dan share from God's Word as he focuses on what Easter Sunday is all about and as we celebrate around the Lord's table. And let's prepare our hearts. He will be coming very shortly. And um, I pray that you would listen, that you'd be challenged, that you'd be encouraged today. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can rejoice in the resurrected Savior. I pray that you would bless Pastor Dan right now as he shares your word. May our hearts and minds and ears be open to your truth. Would you draw many hearts to yourself this very moment and during this time? And we will thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning, and I'd like to welcome you to Freedom Baptist Church in our celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ this Easter Sunday morning. What a wonderful opportunity we have to come together in a variety of different places and homes and offices, and I welcome each and every one of you. Easter is a very special time for us because it's an opportunity for us to focus and take a few minutes to celebrate 
the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. But Easter did not begin when Jesus was here on the earth. Easter began many, many years before that. In fact, it began in the Garden of Eden. God had created this world. He had prepared a garden and placed man inside that that garden. God had provided abundantly for Adam and Eve. And he said, of every tree in the garden you can freely eat, but of one tree you cannot eat. Because in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. The name of that tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan came along in the form of a serpent, and he said to them, Did God really say that you'll die when you eat of that. You'll not really die, but if you eat of that tree, you will become like gods to know good and evil. What he was offering to them was personal autonomy. You can be a god unto yourself. You can decide for yourself what is good and beneficial and what is evil and bad and Sounds very familiar to our own culture today, doesn't it? So Eve took the fruit, and she ate, and she gave it to her husband who was with her. And that day, they died spiritually. They began to die physically. They had broken their fellowship with their Creator. In the cool of the evening, when God walked in the garden and wanted to fellowship with them, they began to hide. I call this the great cover-up. They sewed fig leaves together to try to cover their nakedness. And what we can do as individuals is never sufficient for a holy God. When God was looking for them and they were hiding, he said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I knew that I was naked and I was ashamed and I hid myself. God said, well, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I told you not to eat? You see, sin brought death into this world. All of the death and chaos that we experience is a direct or an indirect result of Adam and Eve's sin. Their choice to go their own way, to do their own thing, to live however they wanted to live, is what plunged this earth under the curse of sin. And God spoke directly to both Adam and his wife Eve. He spoke to the serpent. And he told them that each one of them would experience different aspects of the curse. But they would all experience the curse. In fact, our whole world is experiencing the curse as a result of Adam's sin. The Apostle Paul said, as by one man, talking about Adam, sin entered into the world. But that's not the end of the story. God told them, he promised them, that there would be a seed of the woman. And the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent, even though the serpent would bruise his heel. And we see that fleshed out, come to fruition on the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, we've been going through a study in the book of Exodus, and the children of Israel, God had chosen a man, a man by the name of Abraham. He had multiplied his family, and they were now slaves in Egypt, living under oppression. And they were crying out to God. God was preparing a deliverer. 
Now, that deliverer was Moses, and we'll learn more about that if you join us in our Exodus study. But Moses was a man prepared and chosen by God, and Moses is also called the lawgiver. God used that man to deliver his people from Egypt and to give them the Old Testament law. And one of the things that was just celebrated was Passover. And when Moses was delivering the children of Israel from Egypt, they celebrated Passover. And in the Passover meal, it actually points to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, Passover had to be done every year. It was required. And then they had another feast called the Day of Atonement, when only the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle blood before the mercy seat on behalf of the people. But you see, Moses was a picture of someone greater who was coming. And that someone who came was Jesus. In the Old Testament, they had animal sacrifices. Now, we live in a strange world these days. Uh, we have the gaming community on one end that just has intense violence in many of the games. And then on the other hand, we have some who, uh, some people who don't even want to kill animals for food. But in the Bible, it's very, very clear that sin requires death. The payment or the wages of sin is death. And in the Old Testament, God gave mankind the opportunity to have their sins covered through the death of a lamb. That lamb shed his blood on their behalf. And that was part of the ceremony of Passover. They were to kill the lamb, take the blood from the lamb, put it on the lintel and on the doorposts. And when the angel of death came through Egypt, if he saw the blood applied, then he would pass over that house. That's where the term Passover comes from. And any house that did not have the blood applied, then the angel would kill the firstborn of each household. Israel, because of their faith in God and trust in God, were spared the death from the Passover. And they were delivered from Egypt. And Moses led them through the wilderness. And there was one time in the wilderness that the children of Israel were in rebellion against God and God sent what's called fiery serpents. And these serpents were biting the people and they were dying from these bites. And God told Moses, he said, you make a, brazen ser a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And whoever would look up to that serpent, then they would be spared. They would be saved. So Moses prepared a serpent on a pole. That puzzled me for many, many years. Because I couldn't understand how a serpent who in the garden deceived Adam and Eve could also be a symbol of the Savior. Because in the Gospel of John, Jesus told them, he said, The Son of Man must, even as the serpent was lifted up, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. But the Apostle Paul helps me understand that. When the Apostle Paul says, talking about Jesus Christ, he said he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we 
might be made the righteousness of God in him. Wow. That is amazing. When uh, Mary and Martha's brother Lazarus died and Jesus was going, he said, Lazarus died so that the glory of God could be revealed. And Martha met him as he was coming into Bethany. And she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. And Jesus looked at Martha and he said, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. One of my favorite verses is John 3.16. And it's in that passage where it talks about the sun must be lifted up. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, you and I already live under the condemnation of sin. But God sent his Son so that we could have our sins forgiven, have fellowship with a holy God, and have everlasting or eternal life. That is a gift offered to you and me through the cross of Jesus Christ. But it wasn't just the cross. It was also the resurrection. You see, Jesus died, but he didn't die just to be a good example. He didn't die to be a nice person. He didn't die to demonstrate love. Jesus died for a purpose. He died for your sins and my sins. And that's what Paul's talking about when he said he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So you see, when you place your faith and trust in Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then God takes your sin and places your sin upon Jesus' record. And he takes Jesus' righteousness and he gives his righteousness to you and to me. That's what the cross and the resurrection is all about. When Jesus died, the resurrection proves that his death was sufficient to pay for your sin and my sin. See, the death of an ordinary person would not have been sufficient. It could only be the Son of God. And all down through the Old Testament, the scriptures point to the cross of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That is our Savior. And when we come together for communion, then we are doing something that Jesus commanded us to do. You see, it was that last Passover before the crucifixion that Jesus met with his disciples. And I love uh, one of the verses that he tells them in John 14. He says, because I live, you shall live also. <laughs> and at the Passover meal, he gives them the bread. He gives them the fruit of the vine. And they partake of it together. And he tells them, I will not eat the fruit of the vine until I come again. You see, he is coming again. 
His death, burial, and resurrection was not so that we could continue to live however we wanted want to. Jesus died and rose again so that you and I can live for God like God intended in the first place. What a wonderful opportunity we have. Now this morning, I hope you have the things that are necessary for our communion time together. If you have not yet prepared it, then please go and get those things. But I'd like to read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. That sentence always strikes me. You see, Jesus died upon the cross willingly. He came and he humbled himself before the Father. In fact, in the garden, he, he cried out, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You see, Jesus willingly died upon the cross. And the very night that he was betrayed was when he instituted this time for us to reflect upon his death upon the cross. And that becomes very, very important. But he says that when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, or let a person, a man, woman, child, let each person examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation or judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. This is a time when we can reflect upon what Jesus did upon Calvary. Now, in our service, we have a time of reflection, and usually there's some quiet music playing. But I want to do something unusual this morning. I've never done this before. But I want you in your homes. If there's a father in the home, then I'd like you to take charge. If, if you're single, then do this on your own. If there's no father in the home, then moms, you take charge. But I'd like you in a moment to pause the video. And I'd like you to spend some time in prayer as a family. And I'd like you to talk about what the cross means. Think about it. There may be someone in your home who has never trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Maybe they didn't understand why it was important, why he came and died. But this 
is a wonderful opportunity as we reflect upon the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This would be a wonderful time for them to place their faith and trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. There may be other issues that are ongoing, perhaps issues that are between individuals. You know, Jesus said, if you bring a gift to the altar and there remember that your brother has aught against you, then go and reconcile with that brother. So there may be something going on in your home, in your heart, in your life that needs to be dealt with. You see, when Paul says not to eat unworthily, he also makes the statement, let a man examine himself and so let him eat. The purpose is not for you or me to not take the Lord's table. The purpose is for you and me to reflect upon what Christ did upon the cross and get our hearts right with him and be reconciled with others. So I'm going to bow my head and I'm going to give you an opportunity to pause the video and spend time as an individual and as a family to reflect upon uh, the things that are going on in your life. I hope that was a profitable time for you and your family. And now I'd like us to uh, celebrate the Lord's table together. If you came by the church or came by my house, then you may have picked up one of these for each person in your family. And I'd encourage you to take them at this time. They're simple to use. The top portion will peel off and reveal the wafer. And then the bottom portion will peel off and uh, uh, open up the cup for the Jews. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for dying upon the cross for our sins. I pray that you will work in each of our hearts. Forgive us for those areas in our lives, in our hearts, where we have failed to submit to you. Help us. Lord, we need your help every day. Help us to walk in fellowship with you and to walk in submission to you. Thank you for giving your body for our behalf. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. says, after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. So after the same manner, I, I'm going to pause right now. And I'd like you to pause the video when I bow my head and ask someone in your home 
to ask the blessing upon the cup. Now let's drink the cup together. And he says, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup in the present, you do show the Lord's death, what Jesus did in the past, till he come. You see, he is coming again. That's in the future. And I pray, even so, come, Lord Jesus. But the, this communion table, in a remarkable way, brings the past, the present, and the future all together. And it's through the death, burial, and resurrection that we can have meaning for life today because of what Jesus did yesterday. And we can look forward with hope and anticipation because of the life that he offers tomorrow. God bless you. Have a glorious Easter day.